G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, I thought we might have a look at a plane that I believe to be the perfect candidate to go head to head with the MiG-21 SMT. Now, for those of you who don't know, I covered the MiG-21 SMT a little while ago and uh, suggested that it might be one of the more competitive planes at the higher tiers. 10.3 uh, is a bit of an odd spot for this uh, particular era of jets, uh, where a lot of the jets that are sort of on top are the ones that have all of the bells and whistles, all of the cool stuff. That being radar guided missiles, a nice radar, good performance, flares, chaff, etc. Now, this particular plane, the F-8 Crusader, also comes with these things, but I believe is, uh, to be honest, a little bit better. And I say that because it's a little easier to fly, and whilst it doesn't get the really, really nice missiles, these missiles are definitely not too bad. The F-8 Crusader, I personally believe, is one of the best, if not the best, plane tier for tier in the game, and that still remains true, even after it's been moved from 10.0 to 10.3. I seriously think this plane is an absolute beast. We come with four 20mm cannons and four AIM-9Ds, but most of the plane's prowess lies in its performance. It's just a really high performing plane, it's got a good climb rate, it's got an excellent turn rate, its low speed handling is quite good, uh, and its acceleration is acceptable compared to the MiG-21s. Now the MiG-21s will, I believe, beat this in acceleration, um, and of course in that high speed handling, uh, but as you go to the lower speed handling, I see the Crusader winning out on top of this uh, a thousand times over. Now. One of my favorite things to do in this plane in particular is to climb up to high altitude and sort of pick off the planes that are at that altitude and posing perhaps a threat to other planes. My favorite one to take out is the A5s because the A5s only have about 12 or so uh, bits of chaff or flares and so their ability to, you know, get rid of these AIM-9Ds is greatly lowered compared to something like the MiG-21s. And of course the A5s pack quite the punch, coming with uh, Matra Magics, so these are the perfect A5 hunters, and for me that just is just beautiful, because the A5 is the most horrible thing to come to the game in a very long time. In fact, I think the only thing that could possibly balance out the A5 in terms of cancer level is the A10, because the A10 comes with 9Ls and it comes with 4 of them, whereas the A5 comes with uh, the performance I suppose. Uh, needless to say, they are both as unsavory as each other. Now, over here, I've turned my attention to this MiG-21, who is a little bit low, um, but I'm hoping to sort of snipe him out, but it doesn't look like he's going to take the bait there. So, what I decide to do is go for this A5 instead. It looks like the A5 is starting to turn around to re-engage the F-104s, and at 7.5 kilometers, I send a missile, and you might think that this is such a folly. You might think, well, this is probably the dumbest move I've ever seen, but the AIM-9Ds have a little trick up their sleeve. That longer burn time means that they can cope at altitude much better. And look at that, there comes that kill. Now, because the uh, AIM-9Ds come with the, uh, you know, there's, there's got to be some trade-offs, right? And I think the trade-off here is that its lock angles aren't quite as broad. So you are sort of pigeonholed a little bit more into those more narrow lock angles, but that's okay because you can just tailor your gameplay to better suit this type of uh, aircraft or this better type of missile. I'm going to send one down there for that MiG-21 and hopefully it's going to ring home but uh, unfortunately it doesn't because the flares play an excellent part there in mitigating that. Now this A5 or AV8 sorry is uh, coming in and the A5 above me is also coming in but he's focused on the Mirage so there's plenty of flares up in the air. There is no missile that could possibly be tracking me at this point. And I believe the A5 here has used up all of his flares, or he's used up all of his brain. And unfortunately, he does have a couple more flares there, but the other F8 Crusader makes short work of him. Now, I am down to zero missiles, and I've only got one kill to show for it, which is not very good. But that's okay, because remember, ladies and gentlemen, we are flying the last gunfighter here. And I know before you say it, this plane got most of its kills in real life with missiles. I am still going to call it the last gunfighter, and nobody can stop me. So, speaking of nobody can stop me, that F5 could definitely stop me if he uh, pulled, his, pulled his cards and played them correctly. Um, but it's an F5C, so he's just got mum's credit card, taken it, bought himself a new shiny plane, and he's uh, just going to go and tunnel vision with it. Now, speaking of tunnel vision, we have that A10. 
Oh, and we have another A10. So I'm going to start periodically releasing a couple of flares just, you know, here and there. Turn my afterburner off to make sure that no flares get me or no uh, AIM-9s get me. And uh, I'm going to continue on my merry way. I know I'm much faster than the A10. And the A10 is basically like long gone now. So I'm going to turn my attention to the AV-8s. The Harrier basically doesn't stand a chance in a dogfight. Um, but he can take out my friendlies, and that could leave me in a 2v1, and a 2v1 is a lot harder to win than a 2v2, especially when you've got planes that turn very well, uh, and the AV-8 has potentially deadly missiles, so you just, you know, stay on your toes, try and keep the 2v2s coming, and try to, you know, mitigate the amount of 1vxs that you have. Now, uh, as we get into this dogfight, notice how I stepped off the afterburner there for a second, just as we exceeded uh, 1150. And that's because this plane compresses like nothing else at that speed. Now, you may notice my, cha my uh, choice here to go for the A-10. Uh, and that's simply because the A-10 has decided to turn his attention away from me. Now, I'm going to go quickly into the vertical, try and finish this A-10 before the AV-8 comes around. And I am keeping a quick eye there on the AV-8, noting my chances there with the A-10. And I'm just going to go for it. I think I... I'm very, very close. I can either kill one or completely dodge the other. And it looks like I'm going to go for the A-10A there. I managed to get him. And just as I do that, I put myself in a situation where the AV-8 can't get me. Now I'm going to go into the vertical. And uh, basically, any dogfight here is a lost battle for the AV-8. It is not a dogfighter. This thing is a bit of a bus. And buses do not fly very well, especially not dogfighting. And I'm just going to spray here. It looks like he's taken enough damage to basically start heading towards the deck. And that is pretty much a done deal for him. Now, I have 4 minutes of fuel, uh, 80 rounds of cannon, and 48 flares left. So we're not really in a position to be engaging multiple targets. So what I'm going to do is head back to base. This plane does have some decent endurance. I would recommend taking 20 minutes of fuel, but you can't overstay your welcome, otherwise you will get shit on pretty quickly. Now, fast forwarding a little bit, that MiG-21 crashes and the F5 goes back to base. And now, I'm just going to show you this engagement here because, uh, to me, I, I seriously feel like it is a, a bit of a mum's credit card situation. He's sort of sitting on the on the deck there, on the, on the runway, uh, and he goes to take off at one point. And we're just sort of fishing for him. Me and this Crusader, we're, we're kind of looking for him. Uh, he's noticed that he had a, a, an Avenger order on him, so he decided to bail, uh, which is kind of clever. Uh, but it does bite you in the ass if you, uh, you know, if you have lots of enemies there. Let's just say it uh, makes me a little bit mad. I, I really want to get this guy. And you can see the F5 there. He's taken off. He is definitely going to go back to his airfield in that uh, in that cover there. And I think he's actually got bombs or he's got some sort of ordnance on uh, because he's pretty slow. Even for an F5 off the runway, I feel like he is very, very slow. And just as that happens, I am now made the last player left on my team because one of the F8s crash and the other one decides that the ground is his best friend. So I'm going to send two missiles down to that F5. The first one has barely any chance of reaching him. The second one could potentially hit him, but if he decides to flare, it's pretty much a done deal. So uh, I decide that I'm going to give chase. And at this point, uh, I think it's time for that uh, second missile. And so this guy decides to pitch up for me. Now, I, I don't really understand the reasoning behind the whole pitching up. Uh, he's decided to launch a missile, and I'm just going to flare and make sure that that one doesn't hit me flat on by some odd miracle. Uh, and the F5 has basically run out of energy here. There's no way he can keep up with me. I'm 4,000 meters up in the air. So I'm just going to switch the afterburner off, uh, get those flaps engaged, and you can see he's just here stalled out. Definitely, uh, I think, a mum's credit card situation. So a little spray there with the 20 mils, and his pilot is gone. And um, time to get in the forever box. And uh, time for me to get an ace. So that is a pretty quick and easy ace. Uh, maybe not quick, because the game starts off a little slow, but you can kind of see the way that I like to play this plane. It is extremely effective, but you know, what happens when you get up tiered? What happens when you get put in a situation where you are definitely not the top dog? Well, that's when you become a support fighter. And I did say this in the last video that I made on this plane, you do become a support fighter in these types of roles. You can't be expecting to win the day every single time, but this, this is the perfect example of being a support fighter here. This MiG-21 is harassing the uh, JA-37, and so I thought I might just send some uh, AIM-9D magic all the way down there, 
at uh, 5,000 meters altitude. We're gonna send it all the way down. And you know what? It's gonna hit because the AIM-90s have that range on them. It's very impressive what range you can get out of these missiles. They, for some reason, just love to soar and just, just get that distance. It's kind of like the, uh, the PL-5B. It reminds me a lot of the PL-5B, and I think that's loosely what the PL-5B is based off. It wouldn't surprise me. But these missiles tend to do that type of thing. So if you have a Crusader that is five kilometers away from you, uh, yeah, be, be scared because it can potentially do this. Now, our next uh, target here, our next friend who's going to receive a beautiful bunch of AIM-9D is this MiG-21MF here who uh, basically didn't stand a chance. This J7E is also looking very juicy, but is not quite at the right aspect to receive the gift of the AIM-9J. So we're going to try some guns. Uh, and of course, because this match is, uh, you know, a little a little early on in the piece, I'm a little bit rusty, and so my aim is not exactly on par where it should be. So let's have a look at what this J7 gives us. Now, the J7 is going to out-dogfight us, uh, but if I can sort of stick behind him, he'll have to be a little bit quick because there are lots of enemies around him. So, you know, it's either be slow or be dead. Uh, sorry, or be quick or be dead, rather. So I'm just going to send him a little gift in the form of an AIM-9D, but unfortunately it doesn't lock properly, and so that leaves me in a bit of a situation where I've just wasted a missile. Lovely. Now, am I going to waste another missile on this J7? I think I am. And there goes that final missile. You can see me compressing again. And I think the J7E gets away from this one. No, he doesn't. And that is because this missile is it's, it's pretty good. And when someone's not paying attention, then they pay for their life dearly. They make a little fucky-wucky, and then they just get in the forever box. It's just beautiful. Having the sneak factor is really good with the F8, but, you know... If you can't, you've always got a little bit of uh, a little bit of luck, you know. So speaking of luck, this F8, uh, this F4 is looking like he's wanting to use some luck against me because he's going into an immediate uh, right-hand turn. Like this is probably textbook, like how not to fight the F8 Crusader. You don't want to turn against it, especially if you're an F4, especially if you're basically anything other than an earlier MiG-21, like a MiG-21MF or a MiG-21 SMT at uh, like maybe these mid speeds where you can like cut in behind him and, and snipe him out at low altitudes. Basically anything else, uh, you basically got Buckley's. You're not really going to get anywhere without uh, sacrificing pretty much everything. So there's four kills, like a quick and dirty four kills just by being a really good support. And just by sort of sitting on the periphery, waiting for your chance, and then striking when it's ready. And that really makes the difference for the F8 Crusader. You can be quite effective on the battlefield, as long as you just position yourself in a spot where you're going to be uh, of value, let's say. And in this case here, the A5 is one of the last players left on the team. And he is very much lost all of his value because he's the only one, and the A5 is good in a 1v1, but not in a 1 versus everyone else. And so it's going to be tough for him. And of course, the F8 thrives in just about any situation, except a 1v a million. So you're going to have trouble if you are in a 1 versus a million, but no more than you were if it was any other plane in the game. And so I would honestly rate the F8 Crusader as one of the best planes in War Thunder. Tier for tier. I would say that it is well up there because it's just got great ability to dogfight. It's got a great ability to intercept. It's got good missiles. It's got really, really strong flight performance and enough endurance to make you happy, just to just to sort of see you out for most of the match. And that, for me, is a really, really good combination. And the F8 Crusader being this really strong sort of last gunfighter really makes the difference in its flight performance. And of course, Whilst I talk about the last gunfighter thing, the missiles are also extremely valuable. Now, I'm in here against the F, uh, the A5C, and it's pretty much a done deal. I know when he gets really fast, he's going to start losing his uh, ability to turn, and that's exactly what's happened here. He's compressed at that, like, 1100 rate, just as I run out of fuel. And there we go, another quick and dirty ace to round it off for the day. So, ladies and gentlemen, that will do it for today. I genuinely think this plane is one of the best, and it is right up there with the MiG-21 SMT and MF. This plane could do 
easily it could easily do 10.7 and not even bat an eyelid but ladies and gentlemen that'll do it for today i thank you greatly for watching if you would like to support the channel there are plenty of links in in the description below but until then take care and i'll catch you next time